All right, guys, we are back for another exciting episode of All About Life. In today's segment, we got our... You already know, it's your boy, Jay. <laughs> YouTube, let me know, let's run out the numbers. Let's get it. Let's get it. So today's topic is a real interesting one. And not only that, but we're going to give you a background story of our own lives that allowed us to make a change. Mm -hmm. And the topic is red pill rage and how to overcome it. Because as we all know, we needed to search for an outlet. We needed to search for answers mm -hmm. as to why things were not working out with us with women, right? Yep. Jonathan, walk, the, walk them through your story. What, what did you notice when you were growing up as a child, teenager, young adult? My upbringing was, it was always told, be a nice guy, do what you can for your, for your female. Interesting. Do everything, do like, be, be the guy of her dreams, you know? Sounds very familiar. <laughs> Keep going. Very blue pill. Just, you know, show her your heart and, she, and she'll reward you. She'll give Wear you your heart on your sleeves? Yeah, just um, go above and beyond for your girl, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And where did that land you? No way. Really? Mm -hmm. But why? Because women don't work that way. They work based on attraction. So, wait, women don't work based on generosity? No. They don't work based on worshipping them damn near? No. <laughs> pa pedestalizing them? Hell no. How about just doing for them and treating them like the queens they are? Hell to the no. <laughs> oh, man. Damn, we got it fucked up. Yeah. So, basically, my storyline is very similar. When I was young, even my dad... He was pretty damn alpha, but he did have some blue pill knowledge, at least based off of what he would tell me. My dad used to say, oh, you like a girl? Go up to her. Make sure that you have flowers with you. If you know she likes chocolate, get her some chocolate. And basically just tell her straight up. Like, I like you. Let's go out and give her some gifts. Mm -hmm. That was his strat. His strat was give the girl some gifts while also letting her know that you like her and that you have interest. While my mom's view was a little different. Mm. You want to know what it was? What was it? Take the friendship route, eh? Oh, Take hell. the friendship Oh, route. hell no. Hell. She said, if you like a girl, don't worry about her pants. That'll eventually come. Be no. her friend. No. Be her friend. Be Every, there for that her. That goes against everything that we preach on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so you can imagine I had shit fucked up. It was horrible. So basically, in school... During high school, specifically high school, there were a few girls I liked. In fact, there was one girl that I really liked that we're still kind of friends, you know? And what I say kind of is, is because, you know, there's a lot of things that have happened, but we're, we're pretty decent friends. I could say that much, you know? And we've been, you know, we've been together in that sense for many years. But the truth is, is that I did have a crush on her. And in school, she would always sit on my lap. She would, she would kiss me on the cheek. She would do a lot of playful things that were not necessarily sexual, but, you know, they could show some in the, in the windows. Like, mm. you, 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 someone looking outside in might be like, oh, is that his girl? Mm. Maybe. Maybe. I used to take her out. We used to go out to eat. Is that his girl? Maybe. Maybe. Right? I see them together a lot. Yeah, because, you know, I was always hanging out with her. But mm. I was hanging out with her when it came to the platonic stuff. Mm. But when it came to the serious stuff... Let's just say somebody uh, was piping it and his name was... Uh, it's a me. I'm a yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyways... Oh, woo -hoo. <laughs> So... Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, basically... Uh, I, I wasn't... I, I didn't fit the build, you know. This other kid... We're all kids, you know. We're, we're teenagers, right? This other kid was ripped. Knew how to fight. Mm -hmm. He was into, like, aggressive stuff. And... I was just a nice guy, chubby, to myself, introvert, not extrovert, and I would play video games, you know, and I would hang out with girls. Believe it or not, I was actually hanging out with a lot of girls, mm -hmm. taking them out on dates. Yep. Hmm, interesting. But every time people would see me, they were like, oh, Ant, like, mm -hmm. go Anthony, go man. See with a different girl every time. Yeah, <laughs> they thought I was a player, a player that's not playing. Yeah. So basically... What happened was I started to like get frustrated. I was frustrated because I saw other guys having sex with these girls and I would hang out with them and it would even get to the point where I would take one of the girls out to date to a date 
and her nigga would pick her up afterwards. Whoa. Like, thank you, my nigga. Thank you for feeding her, man. Yo, you got you got something for me, bro? Like, let, you know. You got take up. <laughs> you know, and she would get a little extra food. Yeah. And guess what? That went to her nigga. Mm. So Damn, on your dime. On my dime. You know, and no, and then we would we would dab it up. He would dab it up with me. <laughs> Like, oh man, you a good dude, man. Yo. You a good dude. Nah. That was me, guys. Believe it or not. Yep. So, in high school, I was like, well, damn. And so I had one of my best friends in high school. His name is uh, Gladstone. Uh, he used to try to put me on game. And he told me. He was like, girls don't like being treated nice. He knew that. He knew that because he grew up differently. Mm -hmm. He wasn't... He didn't grow up the way I grew up. He was looking at life through a different lens. Yeah, than you. mind you, th we're talking about 15, 16, 17 year olds. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about grown men yet. And he used to say, he's like, yo, like, if you like her, smack her ass. He would dead ass tell me that. Mm -hmm. And what he would do is he would make jokes. So my friend, he used to make jokes and he would grab ass, but he would grab ass in a funny way. Like, he would like, he would do this Michael Jackson little thing where he, because that was his favorite idol at the time. And he would wear the glove and he would do like fun shit and he would dance and he was actually good. Like he was more funny than talented in that way, mm -hmm. which that's a talent in itself. Mm -hmm. And he would grab someone, he would grab a girl's cheeks and be like, hee hee. <laughs> and he would, you know, he would do You're shit. Phone for you. And the girl would laugh and this and stuff. And I was like, but girls say they don't want to be just touched mm -hmm. like that. And so I felt like a fucking robot where I was like, Computing cannot deny access denied. Like I just was malfunctioning yep, because that's when you start to overthink. Like it was the game that I was taught right, or oh, it wasn't. You know, I'm being nice to these women, but they don't want to be with me. And mind you, I wasn't even thinking on fucking on the first date. I was thinking maybe within weeks to months I would fuck. You are from a more innocent standpoint. Yeah, I was. I just wanted them to be my girlfriend where we could kiss, we could go steady, mm -hmm. spend time together, steady, bro. Know, just chill, kiss. Yeah. Okay. Like to me, that was that was that would have been the world. That would have been the fucking world. Just to hold hands with a girl and and be able to kiss her and go to the library and maybe mess around a little bit, but not even fuck. Mm -hmm. You weren't thinking with that. No, my mind wasn't caught up on that because my mind was a girl is special, mm -hmm. and you have to do things for her in order for her to like you. You gotta earn. Her. You gotta earn. Her. I had to earn her. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just given, but all these guys. What was going on? Mm -hmm. So then in my mind, I was like, maybe they're special. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe they're special and I'm, and I'm not. Maybe they got something I don't got. Yeah. I don't got. And they did. They had swag. Mm -hmm. At that age, whatever that was considered at that point, mm -hmm. they looked better than me. A lot of these guys or kids, they were ripped. Mm -hmm. They had like, they already had abs. Some of them had some muscles. You know, so now you, now I got muscles. Now he got muscles. So you were, you were having a rap hill moment before it became main, it mainstream. Before it became right? mainstream. Because it was happening real time at that point in, in, in that present. So I was going through a lot of issues because I was just like angry and frustrated. So in high school, I remember I started talking to other people, like other people that I knew. And I was like, yo, you know what? Should I just give up on girls? Like girls just don't like me. And I thought that it was pre-selection. At that time, I was like, you know what? Maybe girls only like guys who they're attracted to, which I was right. Mm -hmm. But I actually thought it was pre-selection, meaning that you were a winner or you were a loser. Yep. There was no way to become a you winner. You without your hand yeah, in life. And that's the, the hand, that's the hand I was dealt. There was Me no way with, to upgrade himself. Yeah, I, I had crooked teeth. I was overweight. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I did not have no game. I was always nervous. I would sweat. I would sweat profusely when I was around girls. Always thinking about what to say. Always thinking girl. about what I was going to say, unless it was platonic. Anytime it was platonic, I could talk to them. The moment I thought about asking them something that might be borderline questionable, like in the sense that I might be asking for too much, I would sweat. And I would stutter. I actually stuttered at one point. When I was nervous. Only when I was nervous. But that was the point. And I would slur. I had like a little slur going on. Yep, it was like just nervous as well. You were in your own head. They say. I was in my own motherfucking head. So, the way that we found out about Red Pill, because we're kind of giving you guys a walkthrough, you know, how did you find out? Um, one of the first channels that I saw with Steph is Cold. Shout out to Steph. His videos really inspired me. You For know, sure, boy. To better myself, to He's... get in the gym, to just change my whole mentality. When it comes he put to me dating, on you too. Dating dynamics and the way guys think about relationships and how they move forward with women, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I started just going down the rabbit hole, watching more and more content, 
get myself educated into the space and I'm like, it makes sense. But but Jonathan, when you were when you were because I remember when we were in our later teens and you were already in your early twenties, you look good. Yeah. Out of our friend group, it was basically me and a few others, and then Jonathan. And Jonathan was probably the best looking dude out of our group and the most fit because he was working out with another friend of ours. Mm -hmm. And but what was going on? Was he had the looks. The, the the mentality was in there. The mentality. Talk to them about that. The mentality, the confidence. The outside was the inside wasn't matching the outside, so a lot of females would be interested in me, but I I was doubting myself. I had my own self doubt, and that shit just shitted on my whole game, you know. Mm. Oh, I had females throwing themselves at me constantly, and I didn't know how to move. Tell them some stories. I had a couple of girls like wait for me after class, talking about what we gonna do, and I didn't know I didn't know how to answer that. He was like, I'm "Shit, like, what, what are we gonna do?" I'm like, what? <laughs> wow. you tell, you tell you tell me. Me. Yo. They was looking at me like 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 a leader, and I, I couldn't lead it at that moment. And I also had females got my number somehow. I didn't know how they got my number. They hit me up like, what I'm doing on a Saturday night, and I didn't know how to even proceed with that. So mind you guys, know this. Even if you're good looking, even if you're fit, even if you have certain attributes that make you attractive, if you don't take initiative, what happens? You lost. You Nothing. Know? Yep, you already lost because you haven't played the game. You don't know how to play the game. She's going to move to somebody who knows how to play the game. Because now she's going to lose interest. Even though she might have found him very attractive and she's like, damn, you look good. Mm -hmm. It's like, ew, though. The turn off for them, yeah. His mentality, like. He don't know what to say to me. Like, I just want to fuck. And he don't even know how to get there. I go to my crib. Yeah, that, that, that was an easy answer. That was an easy answer. What are we going to do? Yeah. We're, going to, we're going to my crib. Mm -hmm. Right? Easily, yeah. Now, I will say this, guys. I have a little fun story before we get to the point. Mm -hmm. I did have a, a break at one point. Early on in high school, the first, the first initial time I entered high school, I could have had a threesome. From having nothing to a threesome. And the reason what happened was I met when I went to school, I was to myself, but for whatever reason, I was talking about games and there were these girls that actually played video games. Mm. And there were two of them. And they were like BFFs so on middle school. They both came to the high school together. So I started talking to them about Smash Bros. When Smash Bros. was popping, I was talking to them about uh, just a bunch of games that were that were big during that time. And they were like, you want to skip school? And I was like, it's the first day of class. This was the fucking <laughs> first day of class. I got a fucking threesome on the first day of class. Yeah. <laughs> and so they were like, you want to skip school? And I was like, uh, I guess my dad is not home. And they were like, okay, we're going to your house. Mm. Both of them were just with it. With it. With it. It's about to Mind you, we're like 14 down. years yeah. old. We're 14 at that time. So we go, or, or 13. I was like between 13 and 14. So then we go. We take we, we skip like half, half the period. Half of the period is skipped. So we go straight to my house. We take the train. I take them over there. They're excited. We get to my house finally. All right? They sit down on my couch because I had a nice little couch. My dad, oh, my dad, my dad bought it because I was living with my dad. And I went to the refrigerator and I was making them some drinks, right? Not alcoholic drinks, but like regular drinks, right? Pouring them some Sprite, orange juice, whatever I had at the time. And in my mind, I was thinking, how do I escalate this? Mm. But guess what? I was in my own fucking head. Yeah. They were sitting down. They looked like they were anticipating for me to do something because they kept looking at me and kind of like, like looking at each other, but then looking at me and then looking at each other. And I already knew that they already did stuff with each other. They already probably made out, did a little it thing. Go, it, was it was about to go down, oh boy. So this is what happens. I give them their drinks. I sit next to them. It's all three of us, like me and Jonathan, but now it's three of us sitting down. And I'm in the middle. Two chicks beside me. And they're drinking and they're kind of just quiet because they're, they're waiting for me to make a move. They're waiting for me to do something. Mind you, we were supposed to come to play video games. I didn't turn on no system. There was nothing. We were about to play other games. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem was I didn't know how to escalate. And then you know what happened? I heard fucking keys at my door. Fucking keys. I wish I had keys in my pocket right now. But I heard fucking keys at my door. My father opens the door. My father came home from fucking work for lunch. Mm. 
Mm. He took his lunch break during that time. My father sees us on the bed. He looks at me. He's like, Anthony, get over here. Takes me out in the hallway. He kind of waves at the girls. What are you doing? You're supposed to be in school. What are you about to do with them, with these girls? Do you even have a condom? Like he starts to like almost like scold me. And I'm like, I, I, I was like, I, I don't know. I, I wasn't planning on doing anything, but I think I could do something. And I was talking to him in the hallway like that. Like, I think I could. And he's like, you're not doing nothing. Here's some money. Take them to the, to the, at the time we had the, the, the well, food, court. food court. We had the food court. And he's like, take them out, get them some food, buy them something or whatever for, for having them come down over here. You guys cannot stay in the house by yourselves. Mm. But the problem was, overall, I go through that whole story. Because even if my father didn't come, I don't know if I would have been able to seal it through. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe one of the girls would have edged me on. Maybe I would have. If I would have saw them doing something, maybe I would have. Maybe yeah. I would have grew the balls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the problem was that you were in your own head. It was a what if at this point. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, they come to the crib. they in that mode. You, it's going down. It's, it's going down. It's going down. Mm -hmm. But anyways, so... As I'm learning, as we told you our stories, we started to get frustrated. This is where the red pill rage comes from because we start to learn the reality of female nature. Mm -hmm. It's not what it's all cracked up to be. It's not sugar and spice and everything nice. We know that you can give the chick, a chick the world and it won't mean nothing. If she's not attracted to you, it won't mean shit. And she'll take somebody with nothing over you with everything. Mm -hmm. Because attraction is what? Like I said, it's, it's not subjective. It's not negotiable. It's not negotiable. You can't negotiate attraction. It's either they are or they're not. Yeah. However, as a man, you can raise your attraction. That's something that I didn't know when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And guys that are attractive, like in his case, we were in opposite ends. You can lower your attraction. He can lower. But not I needed to good. raise it, but I didn't know how to. Mm -hmm. And he needed. He was actually lowering it because he already had it. Mm -hmm. He had women pat, basically throw themselves on him, and he still couldn't do anything, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is where the red pill rage comes from. What started getting... How did you feel when you were in rage? When you were just like, yo, everything I learned has been like a fucking lie. It was, like, it was a lot. It was like a, a, a shock, you know, because you're changing your whole mentality. You're changing the way you operate with women, and it just... I was living a lie, you know? I was living a lie. It's like, like fucking breaking out of the Matrix. Yeah. You know the blue pill and the red pill? Yeah. You've been taking the blue pill all your life. And then someone now has the option of giving you a red pill. And you're like, what is this? Mm -hmm. They're like, this is the truth. Do you want to keep living in this life that you have? Or do you want to know the truth? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, fuck it. Let me see the truth. Yeah. And like I said, a lot of people are not going to like your opinion. Some people are going to turn on you just because once you become red pill, you don't want to associate with other people that, that are blue. You, you would associate with them, but you won't hold your tongue no more, you know? No. You will show who you are to the world at this point, you know? Yeah. What goes down on my social media? A lot of hate, a lot of banter against you, attacking you personally just because of your opinion, just because of the way you feel about the dating dynamics and really what it is. Cause it's, it's and how many females comment? A lot, hundreds, thousands sometimes. But guess what? For whatever reason, they stay on my social media. Yep. I wonder why. Yep. Like some some do. I'm not going to lie. Some do either block me or unfriend me or whatever. A lot of females. But a lot, lot of, of them stay. A lot of females, a lot of white knights, a lot of people yeah. that... That want to silence and censor this type of content that we do, you know. Correct. You know, and the thing is, is that this is not hate towards women. And I know sometimes, especially in the red pill community or in the manosphere in general, anytime we talk about women's flaws, it's looked upon as you hate women. Mm -hmm. But when women talk about our flaws, it's applauded. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, girl. Yes, queen. Don't mm -hmm. settle. Mm -hmm. You could do better. Yeah. We're not allowed to have standards as men. It's frowned upon, you know. It's silly. And on this channel, we're here to tell you that you can. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. You can have standards. You can build up your attraction. You can become better looking. You can become fit. You can raise your money up there so that you're using all these possible outlets. Mm -hmm. You can join dating apps. You can use social media to your advantage yep. to get what you want. Yep. Like, like we said, we were the first one, guys. We were the first ones to tell you to level up. We're not going to baby you. We're not going to hold your hand on this channel. This is not that type of channel. If you want that type of channel, go somewhere else. Yeah, we're go gonna, somewhere else. We're going to make you get better. We're going to make you level up mentally, physically, and take you to the next level, you know? All the way up. Now, how did we overcome it? Because 
you can even look at some of my earlier videos and there was a little bit of hate. There wasn't as much because there was a point where I, I had a, a good amount. It was here. I had, I had a lot of experiences with women, including long-term relationships. And that also reinforced some of that, mm -hmm. that anger. And it's not hatred towards women. It's confusion. It's like, wait a minute. Why is this not working? Why is being nice not working? Why is not catering to a woman not working? Mm -hmm. Why why everything I've been taught by women roses, mm -hmm. chocolate, why is flowers, everything you see on TV been wrong? Why is Disney not working? And I think there's a combination of time and just us like expanding our mindset and being able to see both sides of the coin, you know? Mm -hmm. And being able to adapt, being able to see both sides of the struggle, you know? How did you start overcoming it? Because you were actually good looking. So how in your you had a different, like I said, he had a different experience. <laughs> Because he's operating from already having it, but not being able to utilize the power that he has. Taking what I want, you know, just stating my intentions from the beginning when I'm dealing with a girl and just communicating clearly and concise, you know. I'm not. But is that how you got rid of the rage? Where, where, where did the rage start to leave? It started leaving more with time, you know. Just okay. Like learning more about the, the dating dynamics and what people, what um, female and males want from each other, you know. For me, it started with understanding that women are not bad for how they interact with men. Even when a woman uses a man, believe it or not, nine times out of 10, it's you using yourself. Mm -hmm. You allowing yourself to be used. Yeah. Unless a woman is stealing from you, like actually stealing, going out of her way to take from you, mm -hmm. it's you. Because you don't understand her nature. You don't understand when she's really not interested in you, but she's still stringing you along. Mm -hmm. You're not understanding. She's dangling that carrot in front of you, you and you're going for it. And you keep time. going for it every time without actually getting the fucking, the, the whole fucking buffet. Mm -hmm. Because if you want to talk about it, the reason why you're doing these things is to sleep with her. She'll, call, she'll do something called breadcrumbing and text you every now and then. Just to keep make sure that you're still yeah. on the program, you're still what? on the page. Every every few days, every few weeks, you're still on the She page. might even check in every few months. You, you reply, you talk to her. She replies to you once, and then she might not hit you up for the next two to three days. And she constantly does that to you. Yeah, because she can. Because she can, That's and because she knows it will work. Yeah. And the moment that you grow out of that, the moment that you realize, the okay, moment, yep. there are going to be some women that are for me, and there are going to be some women that are not. And that is the reality. The reality that I'm here to tell you guys is, is that whether you are considered attractive or not, regardless if you're attractive, are you going to get all the women you want? No. no. Why? Why is that? Even if you're attractive, why is that? It's just, it's just a fact of life. It's a fact. You know, it's just something you can't argue. So all women won't be attracted to you? No. Interesting. But what happens if the person is kind of ugly? Will there be some women that's attracted to them? They Believe will. it or not, they will. Yep, they will. Mm -hmm. They have options. Yep. They may not have as much options as someone that's considered attractive yep. somebody that worked on themselves considered themselves Correct. attractive but even you mm -hmm. you have options if you fall within that unattractive scale mm -hmm. but it's about knowledge it's about understanding your own worth understanding how they work as well correct saying no i don't want that friendship because i want more from you saying no i'm, I'm willing to walk away if you disrespect yep. me saying no if you flake on me a couple times i'm not gonna hit you back no more that's, that's it. it just throw it out mm -hmm. you don't need it because you're not getting what you want so guys Overall, you know, red pill rage is essentially when you realize that what you were taught is not true and that women actually aren't the nicest creatures on the planet from what you... Not sugar and spice and everything nice. Correct. You know, women are human just like us. Their shit stinks just like ours. Mm -hmm. We're all human. We're all flawed. They have the flaws. But guess what? The difference between you and them is that... We want them more than they want us because there's more of us that craves them mm -hmm. than them. Like, we're the ones going after them. We're the ones shooting our shot. Mm -hmm. So they are here to select. They select who they want. So you got to realize that if she's not picking you, it's not like you're the only option for her. Mm -hmm. If you were her only option, then she might pick you. Mm -hmm. But because you're not, she's picking her best options. She's picking her best options. Yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. And that's whatever she can get because not every woman is equal. There are some women that are considered very beautiful that have the best men, have the richest men, have men that will, will fucking fly them out from one country to another just because they're that damn gorgeous, okay? Everything is not equal. I know sometimes we try to preach equality, but life may not be fair at times, okay? So that's Red Pill Rage, and the way you overcome it is like I said, you get information, you understand that female nature is a part of women. 
It has nothing to do with them being evil. It has nothing to do with them, you know, oh, you know, I, I, will, I will ever be able to get a girl because I don't fit the criteria of what women are looking for. That's where the black pill comes in. Yo, you, you guys just have to accept it. Don't be a better body. Accept the truths, adjust to the facts, and you have a better life. And work on yourself. When you work on yourself, 100%. you can raise your value as a man so that you can get better options of women, okay? But thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. Let us know your red pill moments, yep. your red pill rage moments, and let us know how you overcame it. And if you haven't, make sure that you watch the entirety of this video so you can understand how to overcome it. Let us know how y'all became red pill. Let us know how y'all found the information, what, what caused that, what breakthroughs y'all had to, to reach this information. Yeah, because some of us learned it late. I know guys that were married that they struck out early. They got into a relationship when they were young mm -hmm. and they ended up marrying the girl. They were with the girl 10, 15, 20 years and now they're single and they don't know what to do and they're in their 30s or 40s and they're like, I don't know what to do. I, I, never, was I never had a youth game. I never had to... I lucked out with my high school sweetheart. They never. Even, some of these guys never even approached a woman. But you know why? Because they were good looking in high school. They already had what they needed. They were Jonathans at that point and it was enough to get that girl. But then... They're with that girl, so now you're familiar. Yeah, you don't need games. They know your place at 30. They never approached a woman before. This is your first time learning information. 30s and 40s, starting to learn how to date. Okay? But anyways, guys, again, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. It will greatly, I would greatly appreciate it. We will. And not only that, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and turn on your notification bells because we come out with content daily. Yep. Monday through Saturday, Sundays we might take it off. Every now and then you might see a little mm -hmm. little bonus. We're working the overtime for you. I'll bring you out your daily fix. You already know. You already know. But anyways, thank you for watching. And as always, this channel is all about you. Catch you guys on the next video.